And today is uh, a day I've been looking forward to. Hey, Briar. Hey, buddy. <laughs> and it's it's the day I'm gonna go to the the new side of the property. Uh, so I guess I really haven't explained this, but when we bought the house, we got about eight and a half acres, and then last year in December we bought another eight and a half uh, directly adjacent to us that was auctioned off. Hey, bud, you're not gonna try and run out with me, are you? I'm sorry. He's gonna he's gonna yell. He's gonna be sad. I'm sorry, big guy. I'm sorry, big guy. I gotta go without you, okay? There he is. Back it up. You got back up. Back up just a little bit. There you go, bud. There you go, buddy. Good boy, Briar. Good boy, buddy. I will be back later, okay? Okay? Don't be sad. Good boy. And so, without a tractor, I haven't really been able to uh, bush hog it and maintain it properly. So. I'm gonna go over there and do it for the first time. Um, thankfully, we've had a neighbor who's been uh, kind enough to bush hog it once and he even baled some of it. So what I'm gonna to start today off with is I'm gonna get those bales uh, that have been sitting out kind of rotting, basically, which is okay because it's not, it's not, uh, it's not exactly hay material over there. It's mostly just um, weeds that are trying to become forest again. And I've got a lot of dirt in places like this and just kind of bare soil that I want to cover up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over there with the with the tractor and the forks and load up those bales and bring them over here and just set them in places that are really um, just kind of empty soil. They don't have any cover. And I'm going to spread those out later because we got some pretty heavy rains coming this way and I want to make sure that we kind of start taking care of all this erosion and so the, the hay is going to sit on top of the soil and keep it in place for long enough to hopefully um, things can start growing there again because the soil is really hard, really compact because we had a couple of miniature horses here that needed a dry lot uh, otherwise they would founder really bad and so it basically just went to dirt in this area for that reason because of the horses but then we have some other steep places where everything's just kind of started eroding and we really got to start taking care of that so this will be the first step so I'm gonna go ahead and get all those bales moved and I'll see you back here in a little while. So I just wanted to show you real quick um, one of the areas that's really bad and dirty. Hey Albie. Hey buddy. Hey buddy. Yeah, hi. Hi. I see you. I see you. Don't worry. I see you. You're a good boy. Um, put a couple of the, uh, the round bales in here under where it's kind of gotten really bad. This is in the dry lot. Oh. Sorry, Briar. Briar, you want to come with me, bud? You can come with me. Good boy. Um, and this is all dirt underneath these pine trees and this apple tree here. Um, but the goats have been doing a really good job of spreading this out. Um, so hopefully they do this to all of them. And, and I don't have to do anything because this is, I mean, this is great. They're they're eating some stuff. They're spreading the rest around. And they're peeing and pooping on it and making good things happen. So we're gonna get a lot of this soil covered up this way, and hopefully it starts softening up, and hopefully we can get some stuff growing back um, and stop some of this erosion. And this is just one of the spots that I'm doing that. <laughs> I'll be scratching on that tree. <laughs> um, and there's there's some spots over here that I need to do this with as well that. Uh, have been worn away just because it's so steep and gravelly that um, when we first got here we didn't realize how fragile the soil was and I did of course I didn't know anything about um, permaculture or anything so uh, this got away from us and got really rocky and there used to be a little bit of grass here but it got turned down under some pigs and hasn't really recovered yet so I'm, I'm starting to pile up material on top to to keep the soil in place and stop it from running down the hill and so this is going to be a big project i need to put in some some measures that'll slow down the water and channel it I, I don't know if i'll go full on like true swales but i might do some small little ditches on contour to hopefully slow the water down and stop this erosion and but anyway i just wanted to show you what a good job the goats are doing here and they love it they i put that in there jump they jumped on it right away and they're having a great time. So definitely gonna be putting it, I've got about 14 of these 
uh, hay bales. So I'll be I'll be trying. I'll have to roll a couple over there by hand, and then just everywhere there's dirt. Every so often I'll put a hay bale, and then uh, I've got some spots around the house that I need to do as well. So these hay bales are going to be really useful, and I'm really really appreciate my neighbor putting them together for me and uh, definitely I didn't expect that it they'd still be so nice inside they've been sitting out for maybe a month maybe maybe a month and a half now and uh, there's still a lot of really good stuff in there for the goats so I'm, I'm glad they're enjoying it so anyway hey guys I'll talk to you guys I later. just wanted to show you real quick how we feed the chickens um, Aaron built a really cool a uh, chicken feeder that keeps the feed dry and doesn't let them kick it all around. So I just want to show you real quick. So here's the feeder right here. And I've got some pictures that I'll put up to show kind of the steps for building it. But basically all it is, it's it's some uh, four inch PVC uh, 90 degree elbows. And we've got four of them in there. And you cut the holes in this uh, tub. And it's got to be one with the lid. Otherwise it, the waterproof part doesn't work. And uh, you can see here, the chickens just reach their head in and peck them out. Um, some things to think about that we learned along the way is these tubs have a raised bottom. And so what you have to do is, uh, we should have put this up a little bit higher so more food could go under the, uh, under the elbow. So if you get a tub with kind of a raised bottom, definitely um, put the holes higher than you think. Um, and find, find like a... 2x4 or 4x4 four four or something to set in there to to rest it on. And then we just have silicone on the outside and silicone on the uh, inside as well. And then we've just got our feed in there. And if you're interested in what we feed our birds, we've got uh, this layer ration from Nature Crest. Uh, we just get this at the local co-op. Um, GMO free, non-soy. Uh, nothing super fancy. It's not organic. Uh, we're not worried about organic. We just wanted no GMO and no soy. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to fill this guy up and I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, thanks for watching and I really hope you're enjoying the series. If you want to learn more about what I do and what Permethos does, I encourage you to go to learn.permethos.com and you can see all of the different offerings we have for courses, weekly TV shows, and even more. So if you like what I do here and you want to support me, that's the best way to do it. Thank you.